Brazil still uses very little of its potential in terms of natural resources, in terms of renewable energies. So all this potential is up for exploration and the exploration really starts with science. It is very important for mankind to understand the environment so that we can live in a situation in which life and development are sustainable. And if you want to have sustainability, you have to understand how the environment works, how things are connected, so that you don't create situations in which you are going to make permanent damage to the environment. Most countries in the world have already destroyed all the native forests they had. Brazil did not. Initial concept of this experiment how can we monitor a large area of forest that would provide us with a three-dimensional view of the tropical forest of the Amazon functioning? From the outset of this project, we believed firmly that it should be done through international collaboration. So we bring the best of all the groups involved uh, John Hopkins with experiencing already deploying uh, inexpensive sensor networks in, in the tropical forests. Our expertise in running these experiments for 20 years in the Amazon and of course Microsoft research providing the means and the, the software development. It's extremely enjoyable to be able to take a new technology that we're adopting from our collaborators at Johns Hopkins University and bring that down to other researchers who are operating in Brazil. Through the process of that ad adaptation, create a new scientific data set and create a whole new methodology which can be applied again and again to other research projects. We employ two types of sensors. A thermometer, which measures temperature and a hygrometer, which measures water vapor concentration. And a third one, solar incoming radiation sensor or a radiometer. We designed a network of towers over a hill slope in the rainforest and attempt to measure that every minute. So there's one central tower and around that are five others total and then radiating out between the central one and all those towers are cables, and then between the perimeter towers are cables. So that's the arrangement. And what we did was we took our sensor network and we went out there and we deployed that up into both on top of the towers and along the cables. So we created a mesh above the forest canopy. In addition to that, we also placed sensors uh, on the towers below, so inside the forest canopy, and then we made a transect of about 12 of these sensor network nodes that went up the hill along the ground. They're about a meter off the ground. Challenge number one is just to make the stuff survivable in the rainforest. Once you've managed to solve the problem of not letting the water get at this stuff, is to actually have the thing uh, operate for that period of time without running out of batteries. So that's something that the Johns Hopkins team have been working very hard on and the strategy that they use is called duty cycling. The next thing you do is you make sure that you have radio connectivity because the radio link is how you get your data back. And then finally what you want to be able to do is you want to have a robust data recovery system and then you take that laptop out and you connect it to the internet and you push that data uh, through the internet up to Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland where it gets ingested into a database and it gets processed to where it can finally be used for scientific analysis. We had a, a deployment time period of about a month and we had a total of about 200 sensors and they're taking data once every 30 seconds. And so that represents a potential total data yield. And I would have been delighted if we'd gotten up to something like 70% of that total data yield in the can, but actually what we wound up, wound up getting was about 98%. So we did extremely well against our goal. If we can successfully carry out this pilot study experiment, then we can go ahead and scale up the experiment, perhaps by a factor of 10. So we take 
not, not 200, but 2,000 sensors. We take them into a larger area. Maybe it's in, instead of on the Atlantic um, coast, the rainforest there, we go into Amazonia and do work there. So there's all kinds of expansion possibilities. So always I've been very concerned how science can help to achieve sustainable development in the Amazon. Climate change is a real thing, and it's not just the increasing temperature, but also the implications for variability in weather. Well, if we're going to understand that and how that couples to how we use our resource, then you need to understand the system better. It's a really complicated system. The general proposition is we're taking steps to better understand a very complicated system so that we understand the implications of our choices.